chapter wise list of all my videos is available at this point for dvd pen drive please write an email to me these videos they do not require internet they play offline there is no problem of buffering and please subscribe to my channel for regular updates thank you thank you for your support once again let us take more questions on data sufficiency these questions have all been asked in the previous years and uh, we'll try to see how we can solve them they're all based on seating arrangement type questions so let us start with our first question Seventeen people are standing in a straight line facing south. What is Bhavna's position from the left end of the line? We have to answer whether we can obtain the answer to this statement only on the basis of this first fact or only on the basis of second fact or on the combined two statements or it cannot be obtained at all. This is what we have to determine in this case. For this, what we'll do is, we'll try to forget about the second statement first and apply only the first statement. We'll collect the facts contained in the first statement. If those facts, they help us find the answer, then we will say that first alone is sufficient. And after that, we won't stop there. We will try to go further to the second statement also. We will try to see whether the second statement alone can help us or not. So that is the strategy we will be using. Let us start with our first statement. Okay. 17 people are standing in a straight line facing south. We can just picture a line like this. This is a straight line and all the 17 persons are facing in the south direction. Now, what is Bhavna's position from left end? This left obviously is the left from our point of view. So, we will say that we have to find Bhavna's position from this place. Let us see. Now, don't get confused about this left or right. You see why I am telling you? Because if the left means this side, Suppose left means this side, then if you can find the position of Bhavna from this side, then the number of students, a number of persons is already known to us, 17, we will subtract and we will obtain the position from this side. So this is not the issue here whether left is here or left is there, it could be treated either way, but what we have to say is whether the position can be determined from one of the ends or not. Okay. Sandeep is standing second to the left of Sheetal. We can say that, let us suppose, Sheetal stands somewhere here. I will mark it as Sheetal. Sandeep is standing second to the left. So, if you just picture uh, this Sheetal is facing this way, then one leave one position and this position, this one that I have marked, will belong to Sandeep. Sandeep is also facing south. I am not marking that. It's all known that everybody is facing in the south direction. Next, let us see what he says. Only five people stand between Sheetal and the one who is standing at the extreme right end of the line. Right end of the line is this one. Only five persons stand. So, one, two, three, four, five. This means this one is the extreme end person. I'll mark it as X or just write it as extreme. If we look towards this side, Sheetal is having somebody here, then Sandeep is coming here, three more persons are there and then the last person comes at this position. Next he says, four people stand between Sandeep and Bhavna. Now, four people stand between Sandeep and Bhavna means Bhavna can't be on this side because four people have to stand between Sandeep and Bhavna. There are only four persons to the right of Sandeep according to this. This means Bhavna is definitely towards this side. 
so how many people can be adjusted one two four he says this one this one and then here bhavna is definitely located so it's now i think probably clear that one two three four five six seven eight nine ten bhavna is at the 10th position from the right end and obviously we can say that she is going to be at the position 7 or 6 or whatever from the left end so we can say that this alone is sufficient so simple answer we were able to find it out now let us take up the second statement we'll forget about the first statement we'll take that the first statement doesn't exist at all only take second statement for that a new diagram will be there let us now start fresh 17 people are standing in a straight line facing south what is bhavna's position from the left end okay this is what we have to find out again we'll draw a straight line and all are facing south anita is standing fourth to the left of sheetal okay we can say Sheetal is somewhere here and fourth to the left. One, two, three, four. This person is Anita. One, two, three, four. Okay. Less than three people. Uh, okay, this is what we now we, we will not take anything that we remember from the first one. We will not use that at any cost. We'll simply try to find the answer on the basis of second alone. Forget that there is somebody on extreme or not. Anita is standing fourth to the left of Sheetal. So Sheetal is facing down, so her left is that way. We have drawn it correctly. Less than three people are standing between Bhavna and Anita. Between Bhavna and Anita, less than three. Less than three means either one person or two persons. This means if one person is standing then bhavna is at this position if two are standing bhavna is at this position this will be definitely an ambiguity we will not be able to clearly say which position is occupied by bhavna there is another thing also we do not know how many people are more towards the right towards the left of anita maybe bhavna could be adjusted on that side also so obviously on the basis of second statement alone we will not be able to clearly determine the location of Bhavna. So we'll say this one alone not sufficient. And we do not have to proceed any further. It's very clear first alone is sufficient, second alone is not sufficient. So we can make appropriate choice from whatever options are given to us. Let us move to the next question now. This question says five letters A, E, G, N and R are arranged left to right according to certain conditions. Which letter is placed third? Okay, let us draw five. How many? These are five. We'll draw five positions. One, two, three, four and five. In these five positions, five letters are arranged. Which letter is placed third? He is not saying third from the left side or right side. He has kept a bit of ambiguity here. But let us say, if we look from the left side, this will be the third. If we look from the right side, this will be the third. So basically we have to find out the letter in the middle. Either way. Question is clear. Let us apply the first condition alone. G is placed second to the right of A. We can draw a rough here. G is placed second to the right of A. So we can say. So this will be immediate and this is second. E is to the immediate right of G. E is further this side of G. There are only two letters between R and G. Now first of all take this situation. This means there is one letter either on this side or on that side. If letter is on this side, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If letter is on this side, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I placed two dashes here just to help me find out what will come here. There are only two letters between R and G. R and G have two. And it is clear that R can't be at this position. 
because R is not adjacent to G. That R is either here or R is here. R can't be here, that is totally ruled out. Now there are two letters between R and G. R can't be here because there will be only one E. This is not possible. Now the only possibility is that R will come here because by bringing R here, we are able to have two letters between G and R. So let us draw it. R, A, then you have G here and E here. Now what we need is in the middle. There are five letters, four are known and obviously the last one N will be in the middle. So we will say that this first statement alone is sufficient. Now let us forget about the first statement and we'll now apply the second statement to see whether this one also helps or not. Again, a fresh diagram is required. No carryover from the first statement. We'll have a fresh diagram. N is exactly between A and G. We'll write A. A is here. Then G could be here. Then N will be here. Or G could be here and then N could be at this position. Because he hasn't said what is the relative placement of A and G, only N is between them. We will fix A somewhere here and on that basis we can see that this sort of arrangement could be possible. Neither A nor G is at the extreme end. Now here is the tricky part. A is not at the extreme end is okay. G is also not at the extreme end. This means the arrangement could be, we will have to revise it off. The arrangement could be, I will just start by writing here only. Or okay, I will just uh, write A here. Or you can even see it much, much easier like that. Because N is between A and G. I will just write here, N is between A and G. This way or the other way around. But neither A nor G is at the extreme end. This means there is somebody to one side of A and somebody to the other side of G. You can look at this from that angle also. Somebody is here, somebody is here, A is there, G is here and between them is N. And N will obviously come in the middle. Therefore, N can be determined. The, uh, the letter in the middle can be determined on the basis of second statement also. So we will say this alone is also sufficient. And on the basis of this, you can tick mark the option whichever is correct. Let us now move on to the next question now. This also appears to be a sitting arrangement problem. Six people S, T, U, V, W and X are sitting around a circular table facing the center. There is a circular table and six persons are, we can mark six spaces. All of them are facing the center. This way, this way, this way, this way, this way and this way. And what is T's position with respect to X? Okay, let us now study the first statement alone. Only two people sit between U and W. Let us say U is at this position. And there will be two persons between U and W. Two leave to come to this position. Then leave to you again come to the same position. This means U and W are uh, U and W are sitting opposite to each other. Both of them are fixed. X is second to the left of W. W is facing this way. So second to the left means X is fixed at this point. You can imagine yourself sitting on the table. Your left will come this way and X is therefore fixed at this point. What is says next is V and T are immediate neighbors of each other. V and T. The, uh, the immediate two immediate vacant positions are this and this. They are the only two vacant positions which are adjacent. Now this one is a single position. So this is not going to do our job. We can say that V will come here, then T will come here, 
or if v is here then t will have to be there because they are adjacent but we don't know who is sitting where so this is what we can make out of the first statement now let's see whether it will help us find the answer what is t's position with respect to x t's position itself is not known to us we do not know whether t is at this point or at this point so there is no question of finding the position of x and t relative to each other so we can say this alone is not sufficient now let us take the second statement we will forget about the first statement we will not make use of any fact given from the first statement we will try to find the answer only on the basis of the second statement let us draw a circular arrangement once again these are the locations as we have already seen six locations this way he says t is to the immediate right of v let us suppose v is placed at this position immediate right of v means t will be at this position v is also fixed t is also fixed there are only two people between t and s two people let us see this one and this one then s will be here at this point and if you think of two people on the other side one two then we also come to the same point so we can say that s is also fixed and is opposite to t so far so good what is the last one x is an immediate uh, x is an immediate of s but not of v x this means x is known to be adjacent to s so x is either here or here but x is not adjacent to v is given therefore we can rule out this one so x is also finalized now we have x finalized s t v and now what we have not been given anything else but what i see is we have to find t's position with respect to x but if we see this arrangement whatever we have done till now we can obviously say that x and t they are fixed and t is to the left of uh, one uh, to the left of x or x is one to the right of t so we can say that second statement alone is sufficient so the conclusion is that in this question first alone is not sufficient but second alone is sufficient and now on the basis of this conclusion you can tick mark whichever option uh, you see among those four or five given possibilities we'll close it right now we'll come with more questions 